In this picture, name a, all of the pairs of angles that are congruent. Ready, go. In this picture, we have two pairs of angles that would be considered to be congruent. Angles one and two, notice these markings have the same marking, these two angles. And then angle five and three, they would also be considered congruent. Okay, question two. Let's name a pair of opposite rays in the picture. A pair of opposite rays. Okay, in this picture, a pair of opposite rays would be ray TU, which goes this way, and ray TS, which goes this way. Notice they make a straight line. Opposite rays must make opposite straight lines. In other words, a lot of students think TB and TW are opposite rays, but they do not create a straight line. Okay, question number three. Let's name a pair or a group of collinear points. So in this picture, name three points that would be collinear. Okay, the answer number three. Uh, the points that would be collinear would be S, T, and U, the reason being they make a straight line. So because they're on a straight line, they would be collinear. Okay, question number four. Let's name the sides of angle two. Name the sides of angle two. So the sides to angle two, remember the sides of an angle would be, a, would be rays. So in this case, the sides would be VW, ray VW, and ray VT. So those would be my two sides of the angle. Okay, in this picture, I'd like for you to identify what is the relationship between angle three and angle four. As we look at this picture, we see that this is a straight line and this angle is a right angle. So therefore, angle three and four would be considered to be complementary. And that is because they add up to a right angle or 90 degrees. And then they would also be adjacent. Remember, angles that share a common ray and are next to each other, we call those adjacent angles. So complementary and adjacent. Okay, let's use the same picture. Now what is the relationship between angle seven and angle eight? Okay, now angle seven and eight, they are next to each other. So we would say those are adjacent. We would say because they make a straight line, we would say they form a linear pair in a Straight line equals 180 degrees, so we would also say that these two angles are supplementary. Okay, now let's look at the picture and look at the relationship between angle 8 and 9. What is the angle relationship between angle 8 and 9? In this picture, 8 and 9, as you can see, are opposite of each other, and they share the same two intersecting lines, so we call those vertical angles. Okay, how about the relationship this time between the angles one and nine? Okay, so as we look at this picture, angles one and nine, you will notice they are not next to each other. They are not vertical. Uh, we do not know their measurements, so technically in this one, there is no relationship between angle one and nine. So we would not be able to consider them complementary, supplementary, adjacent, vertical, or a linear pair. So none of those work. Okay, for number nine, uh, we're given this picture. We're told that angle SXU is 3X plus 10 and UXW is 2X minus 5. Find X and find angle SXU. Okay, so as we look at this problem, um, we know that SXU and UXW, that those are supplementary angles. So together, those two angles add up to 180 degrees. So we're going to add together the two angles in our equation and set them equal to 180. If we combine our like terms, we get 5x plus 5 equals 180. And we're going to subtract 5 from each side, so 5x equals 175. And if we divide by 5, x is going to be 35. 
and we're gonna take that 35 because we wanna know SXU. We're gonna put that 35 right back in right here. So three times 35, which is 115 plus the 10. So 115 plus 10 gives me 125. Okay, for number 10, we have a line and we're being told that RS is 7X, ST is 5X minus three, and RT is 45. We wanna find the value of X and we wanna also find the length of RS. So for problem number 10, what we're gonna do is we're gonna fill in the information we know. We know that RS is 7X, we know that ST is 5X minus three, and we know the whole thing is 45. So we're gonna set up an equation, 7X plus 5X minus three equals the 45. And we solve that, we get 12X minus three equals 45. If I add three to both sides, I get 12X equals 48. And we know that 12 then goes into 48 four times. So X is equal to four. If I take that four then and plug that back in, to find my RS, seven times four gives me 28 for my value. Okay, for number 11 on this one, they're giving us a line and they're telling us that Y is the midpoint of XZ. So we're saying that this right here is a midpoint. Tell us XY, three X plus one, XZ, 5X plus 13, let's find X and YZ. Okay, so in this problem, here's what we're gonna do. We're going to set up, since we know that this is a midpoint, this XY is 3X plus one, and we know the whole thing is 5X plus 13. Well, since this is the midpoint, this is also the same thing as 3X plus one. So when I set up my equation, I'm gonna do 3X plus one plus 3X plus one, equals the whole line, which is 5x plus 13. If I put that all together, 6x plus two and 5x plus 13 over here, I move the 5x over and I move the two over, that's gonna give me x equals 11. Now, there's my x value. Now, I also wanna know yz. Well, yz we know is three x plus one, so I'm gonna do three times 11 plus one. Well, three times 11 is 33 plus one is 34. So my two values for this would be 11 and 34. Okay, for number 12, we're gonna find the length between the points X and Y. Okay, so to find the length, we're gonna use the distance formula. The distance formula is D equals, eps, or the square root of X, 1 minus x2 squared plus y1 minus y2 squared. If I fill those in, again, I'm gonna label these x1, y1, x2, y2. I go through that process. D is equal to the square root of six minus three squared plus 10 minus a negative two squared, so minus a negative two is like saying plus two. If I go ahead and simplify that, six minus three is three, three squared is nine, 10 plus two is 12, 12 plus two, I'm sorry, 10 plus two is 12, 12 squared is 144, and nine plus 144 gives me the square root of 100, and 53, which if I put that into my calculator, again, to put that into my calculator, I'm gonna turn my calculator on, I'm gonna hit the second function, square root, and I'm gonna type in 153, and that gives me approximately 12.36. If I'm rounding to the nearest hundredth, that would be approximately 12.4. Okay, for number 13, we're gonna find the midpoint. Okay, in order for us to find the midpoint on this one, we're gonna use our midpoint formula, x1 plus x2 over two, y1 plus y2 over two. 
Okay, again, if I plug those in, six plus three over two, 10 plus a negative two over two. So nine over three is, or six plus three is nine, nine over two, nine over two is four and one half. And 10 plus negative two, that would be eight. Eight over two would just be simply four. Midpoint, four and a half, four. This is my X coordinate, this is my Y coordinate. Okay, for number 14, we are gonna find the value of X and also then find, let's find the top angle. Okay, in this problem, we have a set of angles that are vertical angles. Remember we talked about vertical angles being the same. So we're gonna take 4x plus one and we're gonna set that equal to 3x plus 14. And then we're gonna simply solve the equation. So subtract 3x from each side. When I subtract 3x from each side, I get x plus one equals 14. And then if I subtract one from each side, that's gonna tell me that x is going to be 13. Now if I plug the 13 back in to my equation, then we want to know the top angle that is 4 times 13 plus 1. Well 4 times 13 is going to be 52. 52 plus 1 is 53. Okay, for problem 15, we're gonna find the value of X and we're gonna find the value of angle CBD. They're telling us that this is a right angle, angle ABD, that's the little box in the corner. Okay, so for this problem, since we know that this is a right angle, we know these two angles here are complementary. So what we're gonna to do to solve this problem is we're gonna say 6X plus one plus 4X plus nine is equal to 90 and we're gonna go ahead then and solve that. So 4x and 6x, that's 10x. One and nine is 10, that equals 90. If I subtract then my 10, I get 10x equals 80. And then I divide by 10, so 80 divided by 10 would be eight. So my x value is eight. Now they also wanna know the angle CBD. So if I plug that eight in right here, four times eight is 32. Uh, plus the 9, so 32 plus 9 gives me that angle to be 41 degrees.